Hello, do you like to take more and more risk? Do you enjoy risk? Actually, you know, the rational behavior of general people is to avoid risk. This is the, uh, this is the uh, expected attitude from any rational person. Since we discuss about the rational person uh, whenever we are talking about investment behavior or the theories of investment or uh, when we learn the financial theories, so let us confine our discussion about the rational people. So rational people will always dislike risk. So whenever you are given an opportunity to invest, probably, if you are rational of course, probably you will assess the possible return from the investment and not only that the amount of risk that you will have to assume probably you will accept a very risky investment only if it has a possibility of giving very high compare the risky investment with a risk free investment you know that in case of a risk-free investment, probably you will be satisfied with a reasonable rate of return that is sufficient to um, compensate you for deferring your consumption from now to a future date. This is why the concept of risk premium arises. So what is risk premium? Risk premium is the difference between the return on a risky asset and a riskless asset, which serves as compensation for investors to hold riskier securities. This is the reason when you invest in a government security, you are satisfied with the risk-free rate of return, which is quite low, for example, let's say 5%. But if I ask you to invest in the stock of a company, of a private company, um, probably you will require a higher rate of return, probably 15 percent, 20 percent, and uh, something like that. So, what? How do you explain the difference between this 5 percent and the 15 percent? What about these 10 percent? The the difference of 10 percent between these two. This is the risk premium. So. The reason why we, we normally require a risk premium whenever we invest in a risky asset is our, our attitude which can be uh, called as risk aversion. So investors are normally risk averse. Averse means they do not like it. They do not like it. But they also do, cannot escape it because whenever you, 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 can, you have to invest, you do not have so many riskless choices. On the other hand, uh, you know, whenever you want to uh, get some more return, actually, you will have to choose among some projects, some investments, uh, which, which cannot avoid the risk. The concept of risk aversion assumes investors dislike risk and require higher rates of return to encourage them to hold riskier securities. And these higher the, the amount by which the rate is higher for a risk investment is called risk premium. Now let us talk about uh, let us talk about the uh, required rate of return or rate of return of a debt security or any kind of interest rate. You know, if you break it down, then you will find that it has several components. The rate of return is equals to the real risk-free rate of return plus inflation premium, plus default risk premium, plus liquidity premium, plus maturity risk premium. So normally what happens if you invest in a risk-free security like government treasury bill or something like that, we can actually separate these two to get the risk-free rate of return. So actually this one is the risk-free rate of return and if we combine all other risk premiums, we can sum it up into one single figure called risk premium. So, because of the risk aversion behavior of the investors, they will require a risk premium whenever they are required to invest in a risky project or risky investment project. And 
the required rate of return of an investment of an of an investor will be equal to the risk free rate of return plus a reasonable risk premium i hope that you could understand the investor's atti attitude toward risk and the resulting uh, relationship between required rate of return risk free rate of return and the risk premium thank you very much